very nice to be here uh, talking to you. Um, I'm uh, Tur Aslan, as Ahmed said. I uh, hold the professorship of integrated electronic systems, and I'm in the School of Engineering, um, although I like being here in the computer science department because I have a computer science background. So I'm going to talk about a part of my experience in uh, starting companies, um, you know, and I've named it uh, from processors to cloud because you'll see in the journey there is a move from processors to cloud. And I hope I can share uh, some of my experience with you and uh, any advice I may have. Um, so just to tell you who am I, as, well, as I said, I'm in the School of Engineering and I joined Edinburgh because of its uh, uh, history in innovation and startups. Um, and uh, since joining Edinburgh about 20 years ago, I started uh, more than three companies actually, but, uh, but these are the three companies that I'll uh, talk about. Um, so it's, there's Rika, um, or there was a Rika Tech, the company associated with it, which is in the area of low power processors. And uh, I, I know the audience will know about low power technology. This was a, um, a technology and a company that was sold to a tier one semi but I still can't talk about today. Um, uh, Senseware, uh, which is an ongoing company and it's in the area of uh, cloud and location-based uh, software services. So it basically develops software for cloud and in the mobile. Uh, and Sofan Technologies, which is um, you know, in the area of steerable antennas uh, for wearable and uh, mobile devices. It aims to move steerable uh, antennas from base stations into mobile devices. Um, I will not talk about that because I thought it may not be suitable for the audience. So I'll be talking about the software and hardware uh, and because of time as well. So, um, you know, I have a number of patents in uh, automatic crowdsourcing as well as architecture and RF circuits. So, uh, so the, my first architect, uh, spin out was about Rika Paradigm and it was in the mid uh, 2000s and it was at the time the first um, direct, you know, the first architecture uh, that had, um, that had a, an interconnect of an FPGA but the primitives of a processor. So the aim of this, uh, and it was purely, um, you know, you, you could get um, C and CC purely translated into this architecture. The aim of this architecture was to get, translate the hardware, um, it's, it was mainly for data intensive applications, translate the hardware into, uh, into kernels that could sit into uh, an FPGA fabric for a period of time and then you can apply a lot of data through it. The aim is to speed that uh, by implementing it as a circuit and apply a lot of data through it and, um, and hence reduce the overall energy. Uh, so as I said, there was a lot of architectures at the time that claimed to use C, but they were not pure C. You had to include constructs into it. Um, so um, it, it dealt with control as well as you know, arithmetic operations. Uh, you could run an operating system on top of it. It, uh, it had a tool flow, uh, which was based on GCC, a GNU C compiler, but we added our own scheduling and mapping uh, technology um, into it. Um, and, uh, you know, you could, uh, this, is, this was the first uh, Rika chip that we produced. Um, yeah. So, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, basically building and researching this architecture in the university. That, there's an IEEE transaction on it. There was then multi-core architectures that you can build on top of this. You can tailor it for different architectures, for different applications. The beauty of it is that you can use the same tool flow. So you can build SOCs and you can put uh, slant, uh, slightly variable um, architectures, but you can program it with the same tool flow. Um, there's obviously a patent associated with it as well. Uh, so the timeline, um, I got an engineering, um, I got a funding from the Engineering Council here, the Research Council in the UK, if you're not familiar with it, that allowed me to recruit four people for two focusing on the compiler, two focusing on the architecture, and that was very good, software and hardware people, uh, uh, 
developing this um, concurrently, uh, looking at software and hardware at the same time. Um, I know we have an excellent uh, compiler team in informatics, but at that time, um, you know, if we'd known them, maybe we could have done uh, something better. But that's what we had at that time. Uh, then I obtained, uh, there's a grant, there was a grant scheme in uh, Scotland called Proof of Concept, which was very good. So it allowed us to develop the first generic fabric tool, the first generic chip, and that was general purpose basically, and then associated tool flow. It allows us to patent some, uh, fi uh, to, uh, to file some patents, including the uh, Rika architecture. Um, then, uh, you know, it was basically the formation of the company. So, um, you know, through a smart grant, uh, again, that's a, a, a grant for company formation in Scotland. Then we got a seed investment, um, um, and in that seed investment, what we did is tailor the architecture. I mean, it's all good to say that we can develop a generic architecture that does everything, but customers want something, a problem solved first. So what we did is tailor the architecture to the digital still camera market, and there's a uh, huge experience in the Edinburgh area because of the, you know, um, ST microelectronics be, uh, being here. So what we did is tailor the architecture into the uh, pipeline of a still um, digital cell camera where there are basically filtering involved, there's also color conversion, and so on. all of these are very um, intensive applications. And however, and all of these will need um, a lot of image pixels applied to them. So that was the market we identified, and that allowed us to engage a customer who uh, is very uh, big in uh, Silicon Valley, um, and which led uh, to an acquisition. Uh, because the IP lied with the university at that stage, uh, and so it, there was an acquisition involving the university as well as the company, and all of uh, um, my uh, students are in that company to date, and um, so um, it was a very happy story. My second experience is Senseware, which is um, in Edinburgh. So it is on the big data um, area. So from the perspective of big data, it focuses on location data. So if we look at what's the most, uh, what's the, what kind of uh, big data is used most, then it's location uh, for marketing, um, 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 and, uh, you know, um, and our mobile for basically geostamping pictures and so on and so forth. What Senseware does is basically gathers data from users' mobile phones and basically sends that into the cloud. And it uses intelligence, AI, uh, in the cloud to real-time gather intelligence, feed it back in real-time to the actual uh, different, to the different users. Um, so just imagine an operator using it, then all of their customers would benefit from that data by getting accurate location intelligence that works indoors. Um, so uh, the timeline associated with that was, um, I, was wor I worked for a period of year in JPL on a GPS technology, and specifically that could work indoor. So my initial thought was for a hardware architecture that uh, does that. Uh, then we did a, again, Scottish Enterprise Proof of Concept project, and uh, in that phase, we saw that the market has a lot of chips in it, and it, didn't, there were, they, it couldn't benefit from another silicon chip that did a bit more. So there was more of a need for a software approach, and that's why where we shifted into software, uh, we developed an innovative solution that could work on the cloud and as well as offline on the mobile. So again, we filed some patents, then we went into a smart grant, uh, um, similar to the, uh, which actually was co-funded but with a seed investment. Uh, so there I had a contact which, um, or a friend who developed the first software-based positioning company. It was called Cambridge-based uh, positioning solution. Who agreed to join me in this venture and with him uh, started uh, this journey. Started doing trials and setting up um, you know, basically 
shopping malls and various hospitals in the US, EU, Japan, Singapore, various shopping malls and so on. Um, and then we got a serious um, A investment and then so started more trials. Uh, our database globally increased. Um, and then, uh, you know, license happened with uh, companies in Korea and Europe. So you can see some of them are in the press news, like TomTom. Um, and then we got a strategic investment as well as a license deal with uh, Tencent, which is, you know, the equivalent of uh, Facebook in China. Um, so this is uh, what uh, happened. So what's my take? Um, is, okay, I think um, protecting the technology is very important, so you would need a, um, a good lawyer like uh, Claudia, which I've enjoyed working with um, um, many times. Um, I think that is very, very important. A lawyer that is, understands your market is very important. So positioning, for example, or low power IPs, is, and understands your language is good. A lawyer who's quick enough to turn your ideas into a patent because time is of the essence. Uh, there, it's very competitive, and there are companies out there, uh, like in location, there's Google and all the big ones with deep pockets, and they can just uh, turn out a patent in uh, very quickly. Uh, sitting in a university as an academic, it's relatively slow, although we have an excellent EI team, uh, enterprise team. However, it is slow, um, relatively slow. And as an academic, I would like, before speaking to customers, um, or as an entrepreneur, then to have this idea securely protected. The team is very important. Um, it needs to have, we need to share uh, the same vision, where we're going. Uh, it needs to have a mix of industry and academia. I'm a, an academic, um, and uh, most of my students, I'm glad to say, joined me in this experience, and that was the beauty of it, is just doing these things and co-founding it with my students. Um, and, uh, but however, we are academics, and we always time sometimes, okay, uh, you know, we have a deadline, but it could be tomorrow, or it could be next week as well. What's the hurry? Industry team <laughs> realized time is of their sense. You need to hit your milestones for the investors, for the customers, and that's very important. So that's why it's important to have a good mix of industry and academia who respect each other. An investor is important who understands your market and also um, shares your vision, okay? Um, so, uh, and I can tell you a lot of stories about that, but uh, in the UK, for example, in the case of Senseware, it was very difficult to get an investor. There are excellent investors here, but they couldn't at the time understand why did we need to locate people indoors? And why don't we just use Google or GPS and so on? So, uh, and uh, we went to a US investor and it clicked with them at that time just because that one of the lead investors had a father who had Alzheimer's and he wanted to track his father accurately in his house or where he is. I mean, he could lo get lost. So that started the journey and then we got other investors as, um, as well on board. So, uh, yeah, uh, again, being flexible and uh, adaptive, you know, we came, you know, in the uh, sense where we had a chip idea but we moved very close, uh, quickly into a software solution because that's what the market needed. Um, yeah, I mean, hardware is hard, um, uh, but software is also difficult to protect. You have to write it in the right direction, in the right, you know, in the right way, with the case studies associated with it, and so on and so forth. And it is competitive. Uh, um, um, yeah, um, so, um, yeah. So I think the know-how is very important in the team and the experience in the team. Uh, so that will basically work hand in hand with this. So I think the journey is uh, beautiful, but also hard. You know, there are times where you need to tighten your belt. Uh, and, um, uh, and, uh, but I would say it's a very nice journey. I think um, you know, uh, if there is a financial reward, that's good, specifically sharing it with my students. Uh, but the most important thing is the knowledge and working with, uh, with customers who are my dream companies. And uh, also, um, uh, you know, um, 
Uh, yeah, most importantly is learning lessons to share with my students. I developed a number of courses since then uh, when coming to the university and, uh, and I love telling about the experience and, uh, uh, to, to my students. So thank you very much for listening to me and if you need anything, please uh, feel free to contact me. I'm very happy to help. Yeah. Thanks, sir.